So in this video, I'm gonna talk about moving overseas, moving your assets with you, and how you can do it. Now, before doing that, go over to adamfire.com, especially if you're an expat or a high net worth individual, and see how I can help you. Now, when people move overseas, they're often worried about bank accounts and brokerage accounts. And there's some simple reasons why you should close down uh, or at least reduce your positions to your overseas country's brokerage accounts. Number one, tax-efficient onshore savings is no longer possible in many cases when you move overseas. So ISAs in the UK are a good example of this. Once you actually leave the UK, you're not supposed to invest in ISAs. Number two, though, linked to that, is some people do have a correspondence address, like their bank in the UK or their mum or dad's house or whatever. The same thing in Australia and Canada and New Zealand and many other countries. However, the problem is if you keep using that forever, eventually certain things are going to happen. Either the banks are going to close down your account when you move loads of money overseas. That's happening a lot at the moment. Uh, if you Google uh, banks closing down non-residents bank accounts, you'll actually know what I mean. So if you move too much money back to the UK, that could be an issue. I haven't done anything wrong. But beyond that, many countries now are actually focusing on expats needing to reduce their ties to their country to actually pay less tax or not pay tax. So a lot of people think, oh, if I just spend less than 90 days a year in Canada or Australia or the UK or whatever, I won't have to pay tax. But now there's many rules. And especially when it comes to the Australian side and the Canadian side, a lot of the time they are saying, the government's this is, you have to show intent and always close down your gym membership, reduce your ties to the country. And even the UK is getting stricter on that over the years. And obviously governments need more money because of an aging population uh, and also uh, high government debt. So in the future, it's more likely governments are going to be stricter with expats and say, prove you're really a, not a non, or, or you were a non-resident, should I say, and not a resident. So it's better to actually, from a risk management point of view, really show you plan to actually properly leave the country for at least a few years. That means reducing your financial ties and other ties to the country. That doesn't mean you can never spend a day in the country, obviously, but it just means it's safer in many ways. That isn't uh, taking into account another positive about moving your stocks and shares and ETFs overseas, and that's actually more investment choice. So when you are in your home country, getting vanilla and regular investments like ETFs and stocks and so on is very simple, but getting access to other kinds of investments often means you have to be a certified investor. When you're overseas, that isn't always the case. Now, let's talk about though, uh, how do you move your stocks and shares and ETFs and so on to a narrow broker when you are overseas? It's a simple process. We've helped people countless times with this. Basically, you just need to find a financial company like ourselves, or a DIY, do it yourself platform, open up an account with them, give you proof of address, proof of ID, all the normal forms. But then in addition to that, you'll need a uh, asset transfer request form or the equivalent. Then those two brokerage accounts, the old one and the new one, they will uh, coordinate with each other and you can move the stocks and shares overseas. There's only two or three times I think when this doesn't make sense. First of all, for many Americans, it doesn't make sense because of the very complex tax rules. Likewise, when it comes to pensions, often it doesn't make sense to move your pension overseas. But when it comes to normal uh, asset transfers, normal brokerage accounts, it makes a lot of sense. Depends on every person's individual goals, uh, how much money they want to invest, how long they want to invest. And, and uh, I did not have at all the feeling from any bank with which I had contact with that they, they were interested in these things. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, with you, it was from the very beginning obvious to me that you had experience in these matters and also were interested in what I uh, wanted to achieve. Anyways, I'm, I'm very, very pleased and positive uh, to say that I believe I've picked the right one. Um, the results um, in the last couple of years have, have, have overreached my expectations by far. Um, and um, I see no reason um, why it should not continue. Of course, I can highly recommend uh, him as your financial advisor for now and for the future. Because hesitating is uh, missing out. So 
I'm investing a lot in, in, in the Middle East market, but the uh, amount of returns I'm getting from there is very low as per the amount of returns I'm getting from uh, the investment uh, portfolio which uh, you made for me. Obviously, the best result in market right now is Adam.